Hey, it's Mr. Turk. Um, today I'm going to talk about SharePoint. Um, when you make a team that's a collaborative team, uh, it automatically creates a SharePoint site for you. So uh, SharePoint can be a little bit intimidating and confusing, but basically what it is is just a free website for the team to uh, post uh, news items to or you know upload files to. Um, it's not terribly hard if you've made a website before using kind of like one of those free website builders like um, Google Sites or Wix, uh, but it can be kind of intimidating if you've never done that before. So I'm just gonna walk you through uh, what happens uh, when you make a collaborative team and where to find that SharePoint site, how to access it, and uh, basically make news posts for it. So this is a, uh, collaborative team I'm a part of it's called GHS teachers and uh, right now I'm in the general you know posts uh, feed right here all sorts of stuff is in here um, nothing terribly pertinent to read right now right and uh, we could post news here but it's a pretty long endless scroll of conversations um, the reason you would go to the SharePoint site is that kind of cleans everything up it uh, makes it really sort of easy to collaborate on like an official news item and um, to get there when you first make a collaborative team can be kind of odd uh, the best way I've found for finding a SharePoint is to click on the files tab of the team and uh, SharePoint is an actual Office 365 app but finding brand new sites in the app can be kind of hard. So I think this is the best way to find them the first time. And then once you follow the SharePoint site, you should be able to find it in the SharePoint app. So when you click on files, these are all the files we've already uploaded to this folder. Um, and they're it's a collaborative space. So anybody can upload files here. And there's tons of like files that have been uploaded in conversations here. To see the SharePoint site, you're just going to click on this button called uh, open in SharePoint. Uh, when you do, your web browser will open to the document library in the SharePoint site. And again, this is the exact same library you are seeing in Teams. So notice, you know, all the titles for all the files are the exact same as they are here. Um, you might recognize this though from OneDrive. OneDrive kind of looks more like this. Um, so that's because this is kind of like a shared OneDrive folder. Uh, I can upload files here just like I would in Teams. And um, the first thing you should do when you navigate to a SharePoint site is if you want to see that site pop up in your notifications or if you want to see it pop up in your SharePoint app, you need to follow that site. So typically when you first come to the SharePoint site, it's going to say not following. Uh, you just want to click on that star to follow the SharePoint site. So that anytime somebody posts news or makes changes to the site, uh, you, you'll be notified. So let's go to the home page. And on the left-hand side, we have a left-hand uh, navigation section. So if I click on home, I'll be taken to the home page. So here's our homepage. There's not much here. Um, I have edited the homepage just a little bit and been playing around in here. Uh, basically, I've edited a couple of web parts. Now, right now, there are four web parts. Uh, there's quick links, there's news, activity. Basically, this is just what's happening on this website in this group. So the click links section right here, you know, you can click on this little link and be taken to our daily survey we have to take. So that's pretty handy. Um, if you actually want to edit this home page and add some links of your own to that part, editing uh, site parts is pretty easy. You just click on the edit button and this kind of, it looks exactly like the page itself but there's kind of these extra lines on top of things. Um, and when you hover your cursor over these parts, you'll notice that you'll see a box surrounding the parts. So like here's my documents web part. I could click on this web part, right? 
to edit it, I could click on the edit button and that's gonna open up the right hand side. So this is a document library. Again, it's just the exact same documents library that's on the left. Um, pretty straightforward. If I'm done editing this web part, I just click the close button. Again, to edit any web part, you just click on it and click on the edit web part button. Uh, so for the quick links one, when I click on that, uh, it's gonna let me change the uh, layout. Right now it's set to list. I could change it to tiles if I wanted to. Doesn't really matter. Um, if I wanna actually add links to this, you see a little button right here to add links and I could click on add links. And uh, you know, I could add some OneDrive links of mine. I could add um, you know a web page link um, and paste that here. And uh, you know, pretty easy to edit that particular part. Uh, if I wanted to move this around, right? Like let's say I wanted to move documents uh, right between these two parts. The little handle, right? The little move web part button is right here. And you'll notice your cursor change from a mouse, like a regular cursor mouse uh, arrow to a multi-directional arrow. And then you just click and drag. Anytime you see a purple bar and you let go, that basically moves that part. Um, so again, click on the move web part button. You'll see your cursor change. And you just click and drag until you see another purple bar and let go. Um, if you don't like that particular web part, you can click on delete to delete it. Uh, and again, there's tons of actual web parts that you can add. To add a web part, just click on the add a new web part button and there's tons of stuff in here. If you wanted to put like some kind of announcement, you could add a text web part and type out your announcement and then anytime anybody goes to the homepage, they will see that. You could embed a video, you could use any of these other very fancy tools that I don't even know how to use. Um, so yeah. Anytime you're done editing a web page, you just click publish. And the publish button is in the upper right hand corner. So if I click republished, right? Website goes back to normal and it behaves just like any other website you've been on. If you click on a link or a page or anything, you will go to that and be able to look at it. So one of the great things about this is uh, the news. And you can just make a news post just like you would any other blog post. If you're not a regular blogger, if you've never made a website, uh, making a blog post or a web page in, in, in kind of like a news feed, like an endless scrolling news feed, is pretty easy. So I've already made a page here. If you click on the title for that page, you'll be taken to that web page. And uh, this is actually the default page you see when you make a brand new piece of news. Uh, I just published it because I figured uh, this sort of introductory information was useful and I just wanted to play around with it. So here is a news item, right? I could read the news here. It's formatted well. There's a nice little picture. It scrolls well, um, right? From here, if I wanted to notify other people in my group of this, I could click promote and you know email people or i could copy this link uh to put in an email or somewhere else um, i could save this page and its layout as a template if i really liked this particular layout and then every time i make a new site i have that exact same template ready to go um, i could add it to my navigation on the left hand side right if i send by email Right, I can type a distribution list for this web page, and then when I click send, instead of be taking, being taken to say a document, it'll just go straight to this web page. All right. So, the last thing you're going to probably want to do is make news posts. So, right now, right, if I click on home and look at the news section, it's pretty empty. Um, if you want to add news to the section. Pretty much everybody in the team can add a news post. Um, if you click on news post, you'll be taken to this screen. 
And from here, you can pick one of the templates. Like I said, there are some default ones here. Uh, and I will also make a uh, Greenfield High School template for us to use if you want. And uh, basically, all you got to do is pick a template and then click on Create Page. So let's say um, I'm working on uh, a news post for next week, right? Uh, next week, uh, we don't have school on Monday. So school starts on the 29th. So I'm just going to call this staff bulletin uh, 9, uh, 29, 20. Um, right? And again, it works just like editing a web page. If I click on a web part, right, and I don't like it, I can hit delete. Um, I can also edit sections, right? This right here is a section. In the left-hand side here, you have a couple of very familiar buttons, right? I could delete this entire section if I wanted to. I could add another section if I wanted to, right? Sections are like web parts, but they kind of keep things grouped together. So right now, these two web parts, this column here and this column here, which are just, you know, boxes of text, are in this section. If I click on edit section, I can change the layout. Uh, we could make it, you know, one third on the right. Uh, we can make it one column, right? And again, to edit any kind of web part, you just click on it. And these are text web parts, so these are really straightforward, right? You can um, edit these just like you would any other Word document, you know? Like this right here is our heading style. So if I wanted this to be a heading, right, I could hit enter right there and highlight that and make that another title. Normal text, heading one, boom. Easy peasy, everything looks really nice, really clean, um, right? Uh, I could, you know, highlight this text and if I want it to be bold, click on the B for bold button, right? Uh, if you've used Microsoft Word, all of this stuff is, is pretty familiar. Um, Again, adding a hyperlink is, is pretty straightforward. Just highlight the text, you know, click on the hyperlink button, paste your link here. Uh, you can designate whether it opens in a new tab, right? Uh, and that's pretty simple. Uh, on the right-hand side, all your text and formatting options are here, you know. Uh, if you want the text to be smaller, right, you can highlight it and choose a different font size. There we go, it's 12. Well, that's way too small. <laughs> Maybe not 12, 16. There we go. We can change the font color. Um, what I do recommend is you stay within the theme colors. Uh, highlighting and making text yellow or red makes it really hard to read. Uh, it does call attention to the text, but you can do that using the theme colors. Uh, so again, these theme colors at the top are what I highly recommend you use keeps it more visually unified, but still calls attention to the text when you're editing text. Um, and again, you can you can use highlights, but that's an extreme measure. It's really hard on the eyes. You don't need to. You can also embed tables uh, and other web parts, like if you wanted to, you could click on the plus sign here and embed a YouTube video. So if I click on embed and click on add embed code, Right, it's uh, over here on the right. Uh, let's say I wanted to put one of my videos in there for staff to use. I'm going to go to my YouTube channel here. Uh, this is just a video on how to complete homework in Teams. So YouTube, again, if you've never used embed stuff, you don't need to. You don't need to do anything fancy like that, but right. Click share, embed. Here's all the embed stuff. Copy. And control V to paste. Hit enter and boom, look at that video in the web page. Um, again, none of this stuff, you, d you don't have to do this, right? Like I could delete that web part and we could just make the news just text. Doesn't really matter. Um, I'm actually not ready 
to post this news yet, right? This is this is for Monday. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to save this as a draft, right? So I've saved it as a draft. Um, let's say I go back to the home page. Oh no, where is that site? Um, because I just made that, uh, that'll actually show up in this recent activity section, but uh, basically all of the pages you make on a SharePoint site are in the pages section. So if you look at the left-hand side and navigation here, if you click on pages, all right, uh, I've got a staff bulletin ready to go for tomorrow, Friday, and I've got one for um, Monday. So I'm just going to hold down control and click on this link here. And we are going to edit that. All right, so I'm editing this page right now. And again, this is for this is for like um, uh, Friday, right? If we had uh, announcements online Friday. What you're going to notice is, let's say I was trying to help, you know, somebody edit this page, right? Basically, when you do that, right, that that page is checked out. Okay, that's what that little red icon means right next to that page. Uh, when something's checked out, uh, that means other people cannot uh, edit that page. Uh, so I'm the only one editing the page right now. Uh, once I'm done and I click Save Draft and, and close that out, other people can edit it. Uh, the little book icon just means... Um, Again, that page has not been published is really all that means. If I could get that message to hover. Yeah. So this page is as changes that are not published yet. And you could click publish now from here. Uh, I could check it back in. And that would let other people edit it. So if I click check in, right, it's going to give me uh, which version I want it to be, right? And right the major version will be the version that is published. Um, I could overwrite any edits. Uh, just be mindful uh, if you go to edit a page to add your announcements to it. If you see it checked out, message that person, right? They'll show up here, by the way, as one of the people that have been editing that page. And you'll be able to click on them and say, hey, uh, are you done editing this? I'd like to uh, edit this site, right? Also show up under modified here. If you're really curious about even more details, and you click the check mark next to that page, right? Under this little information section right here, if you click on the I on the right hand side, you'll see who has access. Um, right now, everybody has access to this in the group, right? If you scroll down, uh, you'll see all sorts of other information, like who modified it, who created it. Uh, you can leave a comment as for anybody who's working on that. Um, basically, right, this is an easy way to find the news. Because if you click on home and you scroll through the news, right, eventually this would be longer if we actually use this feature. You could... Uh, find old news, you could find old updates. Uh, if you were wondering what uh, happened last week and you missed it, it would be here. But yeah, that's SharePoint. That's pretty much all you need to know. If it seems intimidating, do it once or twice. Make a couple of news posts. Just post a news post about your class for the staff to kind of get to know your class. Not terribly hard, and once you do it once or twice, it'll be like any other uh, document builder or uh, editor. I, I, I think of it like Google Sites, and I'm pretty familiar with using Google Sites. So uh, again, if you want to actually learn how to make websites, a lot of these skills you're learning when you play around with um, SharePoint will transfer to those other platforms. So yeah, that's uh, SharePoint.